what this is all about. But, you know, so. Um, well, uh, who, uh, um, you know, yeah, Clint. Who else we waiting on, man? Uh, Carmen and John. John. Okay. Well. <clears throat> I'll go run downstairs and check. All right. Y'all got questions for me, man? Um, Call oh, Jonathan, uh, Anthony. How'd you get started? How'd you get started this? Yeah. Man, you know how you finish high school. How about? Okay. Uh, that was been good with hands. Okay. So when I was a little kid, I used to cut grass uh, for people. You know, like 15, 14 years old. Uh, and then I started doing well, concrete that. work, like brick work. How about? Concrete work. Um, and then from there, uh, okay. the guy that I was working for, mm -hmm. he started doing like other things like plumbing, and electrical. So he started showing me things here and there. Uh, I, just, I just love being outside, uh, you know. And uh, then about when I was about 24, 25 years old, because uh, I did that for my like when I was 15, almost like 10 years. Then I, uh, my brother had a computer company in, down in D.C. So um, he needed some help. So after 10 years, I got tired of being outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was a little go inside. Mm -hmm. And so I started helping him out. Right. Uh, we did government contracts. So like all of D.C. government, uh, State Department, Department of Interior, USDA, so we work all these accounts. Those are my accounts. Okay. So we used to go in there and sell computers like IBM and okay. Dell and Compaq. Um, and then we used to bring the engineers in. So the, 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 let's say USDA bought 100 computers from us, the Dells. Well, they had to be taken out the box, look at the keyboard, the mm -hmm. mouse, and you know, run the operating system. Like, so we hired a bunch of A-plus technicians. Okay. Got, you know what A-plus is? Yeah. Get them A-plus so they could go out there and do 30 PCs in a day. Mm -hmm. And then we bring in our network engineers, then they would hook up like the Cisco routers and the switches mm -hmm. and, and get all the communication stuff going. Wow. So I did that shit for 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it took the company to $32 million. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, made the fastest growing ink magazine three years in a row. Um, I got awards from Anthony uh, Williams, the mayor that was down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm part of Big Brother Big Sister program. Okay. So, uh, and then the Boys and Girls of, of America, I've done a lot of talks and, and, and training with those guys too. Mm -hmm. So I just like, you know, just give them back, man. Mm -hmm. See, I came to this country when I was five years old okay. from Pakistan. Okay. I didn't speak English. Right. I didn't know how to read or write. And see, where I grew up, we grew up in a, in a village. So it's like, you know, we grew up where, like, you have five or six families to live in the area. And then we share everything. We should got a goats and chickens. We share everything. Mm -hmm. That's the way I grew up. Right. So my culture is not American. My culture is from there. Okay. So I come in this country I'm like, man, what pisses me off? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of lazy motherfuckers here. Mm -hmm. yeah, hold on. Right? I come from nothing. Mm -hmm. And here I am. I had to learn how to read, learn how to write. Learn how to get, 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 get to know a new world. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time I went to a store, there was aisles of food like apples and just fruit. You, you could just grab stuff. To me, that was like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. That was my, you know, I'm like, whoa. Right. We used to cows and donkeys and there's cars going up and down the highway. Mm -hmm. And the streets are this wide. Mm -hmm. We got dirt roads. I mean, it's like a different world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then I said, man, these people here, they're born into this wealth. And they don't even see it. They don't do anything with it. It's, um, I think the first time I've actually uh, I heard it oh. was, uh, I think it was, uh, I was on the Mass Mind call. Was like, hey, look, 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 you came on, you were talking about, I'm going to get some commercial developments to actually put in my own development. Right. So you're, you're, you're thinking and you're talking, which is different than everybody else that's on the call. So that's what made me remember you from one. Mm -hmm. And then um, John then emailed me about the training. I said, okay, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. 
But when I heard you on the call, I was like, yeah, that, your big news is different than everybody else. And that's what Jonathan tells me, like, like Marcel and these guys are teaching these things. They, they like teaching this stuff. I'm trying to teach people this stuff. Right. Because I want you guys to realize the only holdback in this world is you. You get in your own way. Right. Get the fuck out of your way and let the sky be the sky and put it out in the universe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can do whatever you want. You can do all this. Right. It's just you got to apply yourself to it. Kobe Bryant didn't become Kobe Bryant by not going to practices, right. not sacrificing, not giving up certain things, not running the streets. He became who he had, just like James and everybody else. Right. And that's why I'm saying, I, I come to this country and I see this stuff, I see people being lazy. That shit don't make sense to me, man. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's spoiled, man. Yeah. They be content with where they are in life. And but I'm just real, dude. I'm just a real guy, man. I work hard. I, you know, I got a wife. You know, I got a rent pay. I'm just like anybody else. It's just us. What's up, John? How you doing? How are you? Hey. Hey. How are you? Good. This is my mom. Oh, hey. Hi. Hey. 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 Um, that's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> so, um, Clint, is there anybody else coming? No, I think this is it. This is it? What happened to the other two? I had a friend that was coming. He got called in to work. Oh, okay. There was another girl named Mary and somebody else? Maria never got a hold of her. She never got back. And then you said Brian. It's the one that got called in. Well, this is cool. Let's just get it going, man, because it'd be more, more, um... Intermittent. Yeah, intermittent, intermittent, intermittent. <laughs> Listen, I'm still learning English. Thank you. Uh, I was just telling them my story before you guys came. Yeah. I don't even know your story, man. A little bit. You know? <laughs> you feel good. You're listening. <laughs> I'll let you know. Yeah. No, but, um, Clint, he's going to record it. I need a license, too. Oh, okay. You got your license? Yeah. You recorded, Clint? Yeah, you ready? Oh, all right, so I'm just going to rewind the tape. All right. So, okay, Jonathan, here's my story. Um, Carmen, um, here's my story. So I'm just telling them, um, basically, you know, I came to this country when I was five years old. I come from Pakistan. Okay, so when I came to this country, I didn't speak no English. I didn't read or write, none of this stuff. Um, and I come from a little village in Pakistan where we, we live, there's like six, seven families living in the village. We have our own goats and chickens and stuff, and, and everybody, you know, works together as a team. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I'm brought up, that's the way we raised. So, you know, we would go out and, you know, get the eggs and, and help the women with the, with the wood so they could cook and everything. Yeah. Um, and then I came here in 1975. Okay, so um, we have no green card. We didn't have no, no, no citizenship, none of that stuff. So, you know, my dad was the first generation here. So, and it's, it's five, five of us, five brothers, no, no sisters. So we lived in Arlington, uh, Virginia. So at that time, in the 70s, you can keep in mind, World War II ended in 68, right? So when World War II ended, there was a lot of... Huh? Vietnam. Huh? Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam. And there was a lot of immigrants that came to the U.S. between the 70s and 80s, okay? So in Arlington, right where, over there by the Pentagon, you had the Chinese, you got Laos, you got Spanish, you got Africa. It was like a melting ground. It was like everybody was trying to survive out of this, this area. So um, we delivered like newspapers and, you know, took out people's trash and clean gutters and anything we could do for cash, right? But it was five of us. So um, we did that for a very long time. And uh, I never finished high school. Uh, got in trouble with, with this whole system down here. But one of the things that I never really, uh, really understood was, like, you know, a lot of people that are born in this country, they, they're born into a lot of wealth, but they just don't realize that what they have here. You know what I mean? I mean, like I was telling them, first time I went to a grocery store, and I seen foods, uh, like aisles of food. To me, I was like, damn. Because we come from dirt roads and 
you know, at the highways and the cars, we have donkeys and and and, and horses back there. You know, it's like a totally different world. So then I'm like, man, these people here, they just, they don't get it. You know, so my thing is today is just to kind of share uh, my knowledge, my experience, and, and help people, man. Because I want to create value for you. The more value I create for you guys, you guys will create value for me. Mm -hmm. And like I was telling them, I can't take this with me. Because yeah. I'm going to die, and, and God's going to be like, whoa. Oh, you held your knowledge back. But if I could help a thousand kids, a thousand people, they can be like, come on in. And I'm talking about that side of the fence. You know, so that's that's what this is about. Um, I'm no smarter than anybody else. I just work hard. And if you work hard and you are consistent, you can get anything, man. You can get anything as well. Will you write my quote there? Yeah, because that's what I tell these guys, being consistent, and that's something we're working on. Yeah. And that's true. That's, I mean, that right there is true. You know, that's that's how you got to live every single day. Right? So let me, let me just tell you. All right, so there's this three, three different categories here. Okay? So this is this category. This is this one here, and this is this one. So every, if you live like this, what happens? The outcome is everybody's going to win. Okay? So the actions is being, you're going to have integrity. Training. Like I was saying, you've got, you got to train yourself. Just like, I was giving an example of Kobe Bryant. Training, 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 right? And communication. Communication is key to marriage. It's key to any, any relationship. With God, with your mom, with your brothers. Communication is key. Okay? And then you got to play full out. Like I was telling Milton the other day, can't be scared. You just gotta, you just gotta go in and do it, man. Cause we hold ourselves back. So get out, get out of your own way. So you gotta play it full out. And there's a, there's a, uh, a training class called the Landmark Course. And if you guys get some time, I'll tell you more about that. So you know, just being loving. You know, just being honest, being humble, being loving. What happens? You get more clients. Right? You get happier clients, okay? And then clients give you referrals, right? But having sincerity, being sincere with things, being honest, ain't no reason to lie and cheat. What happens to like Gaddafi and all these people? They all end up dead, shot in the head. Look at Bin Laden, shot in the head, right? Look what's going on in Syria with, with President Assad, he's killing those people. He's going to be shot in the head. It's, you, you gotta be, you gotta be honest, man, and be professional, right? Be for, and carry yourself that way. You know, it's a win. You create a win-win for everybody. And those are the people you want to be around. You don't want to be around people that's gonna be negative and always complaining and you know all that stuff. Cause all that does pull you down. Man, get the hell off me, man. You gotta let go of those people. And you gotta go, go where other people ain't going. And don't, don't be followers. Be leaders. You know? So, and reliability. If you say you're going to do something, do it. You know, if you say you're going to commit to something, then do it. You tell somebody you're going to be there at 8 o'clock, be there at 755. You know, that, and then here, being consistent. Now, if you do these things even 10 minutes, 20 minutes a day, but you do it every day, okay, that's how you have growth in business. That's how your business grows. Right? And then how do you time management? Control your time. We all got the same hours, 24 hours a day. Just all of us do. It's how we manage our time. It's what we do with the time. Right? And be organized. Right? And then follow through. You're going to call 50 people back, call them back. That's where most people mess up. They don't follow through. They do all these things to get all these things going, but they never go back and follow through. And you lose a lot of business that way. But, and then have a process. Right? Have your systems, have a process, have a plan. This right here, this, this is, that's real. But oh, we're not here for this. No, I just have to. Yeah. I mean, I mean the book on um, Compound Effect, right? Mm -hmm. By Darren Hardy. Um, he's a publisher of Success Magazine. Okay. Yeah, just a couple of books. 
All right, so today we're going to talk about construction and um, how to do a construction budget, right? How do, we're going to talk about estimates, like how to go out I mean, you're in a house. Now, for you, well, you're an agent, you're an agent. I'm, I'm becoming an agent. I should be an agent soon. So for us, as well as investors, is we got to know how, how to basically handle, uh, when you go to a house, measure how much it's going to cost to replace carpet? How much is it going to cost to if you want to put in hardwood floors? How much is it going to cost if you want to put in ceramic tiles? Right? How much is it going to cost if you rip out a kitchen and put in a, a new kitchen? Right? And then, and then some of the things that, that you can do inexpensively to create value for the house, like, like stain the deck, paint the walls, you know, just add curb appeal to the outside of the house by adding mulch. You know, we're going to talk about these little things because the goal here is, is for us to make more money by having more knowledge to be able to serve the client. Regardless if you're selling the house and you go to a, to a, a listing situation and you say, look, you, you get maybe $200,000 for your house the way it is. But if you add some value to it by doing these little things, add $1,000 to $1,500, or if you rip out the whole kitchen and add this, now you can probably get 280, 270. Right? But be able to have just a basic understanding on, on how to go in there and talk with authority and talk with confidence. And then be able to, you know, because people see when, when you don't know something. Right? And, it, and keep in mind, you're just giving out a ballpark. You're not contractors. You never will be contractors. But you can have a basic fundamental understanding. Right? So that's what we're going to talk about there. How does that? Okay? Alright, so if y'all have any questions, like some, like what are the things you guys want to cover? Pretty much everything you said, the construction yeah, budget, yeah. you know what I mean? Figure out what some calls. Okay. Same thing. Alright, so some of the tools you got to have. You got to have your coffee in the morning. Absolutely. Okay. I'm on a diet, but I had to have a donut today. You gotta have a tape tape measure. You gotta have a able to, to measure. Okay. Um, Harvard floors, you know, they come in different different thickness and different sizes and stuff like that. So we're gonna talk about how to measure the floors. And also we're gonna talk about how to resand the floor. Sometimes a lot of times the floors are good, but they got stains on them. You can resand the surface and apply a new finish finish on there instead of replacing everything. Right? Um, you gotta have a knife. Okay, because you never you get in situations where you got to cut something or whatever. You got you should always have a knife. Uh, this is a builder's you know contractor's knife. But you should have one. Um, you should always carry a towel because there's houses that have mold or it just it just stinks in there. And or when you touch something, you know I've done a couple of times. I, you, you should you, yeah. You got to have something. To, you, know, you don't want to go home. My wife get mad because I be going home like this. And she got to. Lobby two times a week instead of once. Um, I keep a little recorder with me because a lot of times I'm not able to write, but I can walk through a house. But like, hey guys, I'm at 1223 Main Street. Right, the kitchen is 18 by 24. Okay, this bedroom's got three bedrooms, got three, you know, I could talk about it. And then I could go back and listen. Because if you're looking at three, four, five homes a day, you're not going to be able to, to remember every day. Well, okay, I'm old. <laughs> but that's on the phone there? Yeah, avoid recording. So you wouldn't need that anymore. <laughs> I'm paying $50 for this, man. That's what I'm saying. No, avoid another call. Use your phone. Oh, I, got, I don't have those. I still got this, this one here. You should have that. You should have that. Oh, Cliff's my IT guy. So uh, he, he does it. He does all that. I'm still uh, in case you forget that, you know it's doing the back. Um, but I'm comfortable with this one. Mm -hmm. well, I keep this one. Uh, and then have a have a calculator. You know, have a calculator with you guys. Alright? Now this this is this is a kind of cool tool. This is a um, a material estimate. It gives you like it's a calculator in here. Okay? So this is kind of cool. It tells you like if you put in square feet, mm -hmm. if you do square yard, because carpet is sold in the yard. Okay, so you could come in here like I like I'll, I'll let him 
So let's say if the room is 15 times, I don't use this one. 15 times 15. That's, and then you hit that, you see it says feet and inches and yards? Mm -hmm. Hit feet, that's 225 feet. So if you hit yards, that's 75 yards. So if you know that the carpet is going to cost $5 a yard, then you take this times five. So that this room is going to cost $375 to put carpet in this room. Right? So um, it also does studs. So let's say you're going to stud this room out. You're going, and this is 35 feet long. So studs are every 16 inches. Right? Studs every 16 inches. So most time, house ceilings are like 8 feet tall. Now you may get a situation where they're 9, 10 feet tall ceilings. So the studs come by 2 by 4 by 8 or 2 by 5 by 4 by 10. Right? So it depends on the size of the, of the ceiling. That makes sense? Yeah. You confused over there? The last number, the 10 or the 8, it depends on the ceiling. So if it's 10 feet tall ceiling, it's going to be 2 by 4. It's always going to be a 2 by 4. But it's either going to be a 10 foot or an 8 foot or a 12 foot. Okay, so, but they're always going to be 2x4s. Right? So, if you, like some of the houses in Baltimore I've done, some of those ceilings are like 12 feet tall ceilings. So, we had to use 2 by 4 by 12s But some of the houses in PG County are normally 10 or 8. Or, you know, if they're 9, then we get the 10 to cut it. We don't like doing that because we don't waste, waste material. You know, so, but that's a cool little calculator. Um, I got this from Home Depot for the guys. Um, and they can do concrete, so if you're doing a driveway, so let's say the driveway is 25 feet long, put two cars 18 feet, so you can put in your 24 by 18 and it tell you how much concrete you need. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, another free thing is this right here. This is where, this right here is, is free. It's at the Home Depot. Okay? And this is a real good tool to, to try to figure out how many cabinets you need. Okay, it's very easy to read, and it tells you step by step. Okay? And it, and it gives you the size. It tells you the size of the wall cabinets. Right? It tells you the size of the base cabinets. So the base cabinets are the ones that go on the, on, the, on the floor. Those are the base cabinets. So usually, let's say you do a 30-inch sink. That's going to be a 30-inch base. Right? And then if you do like the walls, if you're, if you're height, like this even tells you the height. So if your height from the floor here is 96 inches, it tells you different ways to measure the height. If it's 84 inches, then it'll tell you your height. And it'll give you a couple of little uh, layout examples of how you may want to reposition that kitchen. Right? And so and then here, like every square is, is basically 12 inches, one foot. So you can just draw a, a diagram, so like I was just doing here. So let's say I do a, a, a kitchen island and I knock down the wall and put a little island there. So I know how much granite I'm going to need, what kind of cabinets to put down there. So you could use this diagram very easily. And just, just read it. Just read, read, read this step by step. They're written in Spanish too. <laughs> and then on here, it'll tell you the accessories. Like, so let's say a couple of houses I've done, the end cabinet might be next to a sliding door to go out to a deck. Right? So you could do accessories like put like little little another side panel on the side of the end cabinet to give it that finished look. The bottom line is, 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 you know, you want to have a good product, right? Good products automatically sell themselves. And sometimes where a lot of investors go wrong, a lot of builders go wrong, it's like they'll, they'll go 89%, they'll go cheap. Towards the end. Towards the end. It's like, damn, I should have put in another thousand dollars and I would have saved 45 days. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just put in the extra thousand dollars or whatever, like, I, I, I put in uh, window rods. I go to J.C. Penny and get drapes. Right? So my wife goes in there, she does that. So if it's 96, so we put in little drapes. So let's say it costs us $500 to put in drapes. 
So what? But it makes the product look better. It also gives the home buyer a, 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 another incentive. So she could go look at 10 houses. You know, that one had window drapes and it had blinds. It's one less thing to do. Exactly. The objective is to make it easy for a buyer or a seller. Make it easy. Take stuff off their plate to show them your value, show them your added benefit. This is why they should deal with you. This is why they should deal with you. This is why you're different. This is why you're unique. You're added value. And all these DVDs and CDs, and all, that's what they, they, they all tell you. Where is your uniqueness? Where is your added value? Right? So by knowing these things and having the right tools, it's going to allow you to put yourself in another bucket. Because you want to get away from the buckets with all these other crabs that are just pulling you down. Because they get what they're getting because they're not doing what's necessary. If you do these things over here, be consistent, and, and you just apply yourself and put time and practice, you, you, know, you put yourself in the bucket, that's when things will start happening. Right? Yeah. So that's what this is about, right? All right, so now I got cabinets here. My products, I try to, not, I try to go to Home Depot just to see what the cost is. But it also depends on the area. If I'm doing a house in Capitol Heights and I know it's only going to exit at 169, 159, 139, well, I'm not going to put in, you know, high-end cabinets. I'm not going to put in, like, designer cabinets. But if you go into an area like McLean, Virginia, where I could sell a house for $900,000 or go to the city of Alexandria where I could sell a house for $800,000, well, I'm going to put in a better product. It depends on D.C. weight. Now, I've done a house in uh, Trinidad. Um, I did put in these cabinets and it went like this. You know, but now the different the difference between these cabinets and the cabinets that you get over there is probably a cost of three thousand dollars. But then you gotta look at it well holding costs. If I put these cabinets in, I'm gonna get the house sold quickly. But if I put those cabinets in, it's gonna cost me three thousand dollars up front, but it's gonna sit. Maybe 30 days or 45 days. Maybe 20 people that come look at that and then consider putting a contract. Or did five people look at this and put in a contract. It, it goes back to the end product. Right? But one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to overbuild. You don't want to put an extra $50,000 in the neighborhood when you know you're not going to get it out of there. Do you ever go look at the competitors first? All the time. And just see what All the time. was active on the market? Oh, yeah. All the time. Um, Okay, so floors, when you do floors, right, so Home Depot, they have a box which covers 17 feet in the box. All right, each box is like $67. Okay, so if you got a room that's 15 by 15, and you could use your calculator, it'll tell you the square footage, you know how many boxes to buy, right? So that's your material cost. Okay, know the measurements. Now, labor cost. Labor cost is going to be anywhere from five dollars to eight dollars a square foot to install hardwood floors. It depends now. A couple of houses I've gotten into where I've taken back the carpet, I've taken back stuff, and the plywood, with the subfloor was rotted out. You know, the floors go like this; they rot it out, and the joists move. That then that's like when you you, know, you got to fix the joists and you got to put a new subfloor, and the price goes up. Because sometimes the floors are like not level, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that means either because the joists is going like this on the bottom, and then the subfloor goes on top. Right. So you gotta if you if you take the old floors down or take the carpet down, you notice that then you know a piece of plywood which is four by eight, okay, it's going it's going to cost you about thirty dollars, forty dollars. Right. Depends on if you go go with a half inch mm -hmm. or a three and quarter inch. Mm -hmm. In my house, I was, you know, I would go with three quarter because you want more stability, you know. And, and most Americans are fat these days, and you know, no, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm just saying. So things like that, you want to keep all that into consideration, right? But also, don't you don't want to overbuild at the same time. But I believe in doing things right. So don't go cheap on materials. You know. So and always put in at least a 15% overage. Okay, at least a 15% overage. So you could determine, let's say you're going to drop $30,000 in a house. 
But keep in mind, if you take down this, it's got wood paneling. You peel that wood paneling back, it can be termites back there, which there was many times. Or it could be some of the studs back there are like, we're just rotted out. Mm -hmm. Right? Your cost, Your cost goes up. And you see, and if you're going to stay in this type of business, you know, you don't want to cut corners. You know, you don't want to cut corners. You want to make sure that if it's going to cost you extra $500 or $1,000, put the money in and do it right because you want referrals. You want referrals, and you want to deal with people, ethical people, ethical contractors. They're going to tell you, look, the right way to do it is rip this shit out and put in a new one. That's the bottom line. You know? so I, and also, I got this moisture, this is, a, this is a moisture reader. Okay, so a lot of times, these homes that have been sitting around for like three months, six months, 12 months, they, they have moisture inside it, so you can put this up against the baseboard on the floor, and it's got a reader, it'll tell you, and it comes with a little, little, little diagram here. Is that good for drywall too? Yeah, drywall and, and wood. Um, you just change it and put wood, if it's wood, if it's drywall, and you pass this around. It gives you a rating. If it's 23 or something, then it's, there's a lot of water back there. So, you know, you, you, that, that could be issues. So when you do your budget, just always think, okay, I may have to take this whole thing down. If I'm gonna have to take this thing down, okay, this is 16 feet long, about 20 feet. That's okay. How much? That's another thousand dollars. Home inspectors should use them. They do. They do. They should. I, I, I guess they do. Well, I'm a, I'm a home inspector. I've been, I've, I've done many home inspections. There's a lot of little tools that that you could you can have. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. A lot of them are lazy, and they don't know what they have. This one house I sold, I swear to God, I I had four offers that fell through, and four different home inspectors. Each one of them found totally, totally something different. Each one, one guy comes and says, "Oh, there's only these things wrong, so we fix them." And then the offer falls through. Another guy comes, "Oh, these other things wrong, we we'll fix those." Another guy comes in, "Oh, okay, okay. now the roof." Four, these guys don't know, man. So this is what I want you guys to understand the basic fundamentals so you can have a better understanding. So when these jokers come in there and hit you with three, four hundred dollars, you just say, look, man, you didn't check out the plumbing, you didn't check out the electrical, you didn't check out this. You could be knowledge. The more knowledgeable you are, right, the better you could you can you control the situation. Right? So okay, so those are some of the tools. Uh, oh, electric panel. Okay, so a lot of these houses. Right? A lot of these houses that were built in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, most of them, they have like a 100 amp service coming into the house. You gotta do it heavier. Okay? So 100 amps is, is, is basically, that's not no good. Back in the day, people had maybe one television. You know, they didn't have toasters and they didn't have all these things. You know, there were simple people living simple lives. As we've evolved, now we've got five TVs and stereo systems, computers. And, you know, so you should always have at least minimum 150 if it's going to be split between the gas. So the gas guy carries certain weight and the electric pen guy carries certain weight. All right, so what I mean by that, okay? So you go to a house, you got a 150 electric panel. You have your appliances. You got a gas stove, which is, you know, is gas. So it's not going to pull on the electric. Hot water heater, furnace, dryers. So that's not going to pull on the panel. If everything in the house is electric, okay, then you got a 100 amp, you're going to be in trouble. It's going to flicker and, and you're in the dark. And it could cause fires because it overheat. Okay? So make sure your, your electricians, what I call is a load balance. Make sure they do a load balance. Make sure they look at the breakers that it's probably loaded. So this 20 amp breaker has the proper, proper amount of circuit and, and, and the currents going through there. Right? So you don't have a 10 amp breaker pulling 20 amps. So you got to do what they call balance your load. 
It's got to be even so it don't get high and cost. Most fires happen because of electrical. How many fires happen because of plumbing? You know, this, 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 this shit, this is serious, man. You can, electric, you got to take serious. And the thing is, as investors, people will come back two, three years later and say, look, you sold me this house, you did this renovation, and, and two of my kids just died. You know, get your permits pulled, use Class A contractors, you know what I mean? Get, don't, people come in and say, y'all can do this for $1,200. Okay, but what, is that twelve hundred dollars gonna be enough to protect your ass three years from now when them two kids die? What's the price? I mean, they got insurance, they got you know, they're bonded, they're licensed, they got years of they're professional. Like the board said, be professional, be friendly, be honest. You know, don't deal with no crooked ass people because you're gonna get crooked ass results. You know, this I mean, I get calls made, but oh, I do everything. I do everything. What the hell do you specialize right. in? <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. You do everything. You, I love football. Mm. I look at football team as everything. Mm. You got to play your position in terms of where you're good at. If you're a quarterback, stay in your lane. Mm. If you're a running back, stay in your lane. You don't see a running back being a live defense man. They don't play multiple positions. They play their key position. And that's how teams win. By having the right people at the right area, because we're not strong at everything. We all have weaknesses. You bring in the people that you need to cover your, your weaknesses. So but make sure your electrical stuff is done right. So when we go inspect some of these houses, especially when you see those little twisty fuse boxes, yank them out. The most heavy of going to cost you about three to $4,000 is what's going to cost you. OK? So and also, if these houses don't have air conditioning systems, now you got to put in a disconnect switch. Okay, so that's, you may have to put in a sub panel to put in a disconnect switch, right? So all these things just have an idea. So when you look at these homes in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, look at your panel, see what kind of panel you got. You got updated, it's three to $4,000, right? And then so plumbing, I don't have no plumbing stuff here, but <coughs> plumbing, most of these houses are built out of cast iron drains. The main drains are cast iron. Okay, just like anything in life, everything has life lifespan. The milk goes bad after certain days. Right? We all gonna die after certain days. Everything breaks or cracks. So a lot of these older homes, they tend to shift. So look at your main drain. You see cracks, you see like a lot of rust, a lot of metal in there. There's a good possibility you may have to replace the main drain. Right. Now, one of the things that you can do is contact Rotor Rooter, pay them five hundred dollars. They'll come with the with the uh, uh, camera snake. Okay, they'll snake out the whole line and tell you if underground, if it's clogged up or broken underground. Right, five hundred dollars, you get that done. That could be an added value you to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner or seller, buyer, whatever, we have checked out the main drain. The main drain lines are clean. But again, added value. You want to make yourself different, make yourself unique. Right? Added value. Right? And plus, if you know that the house is going to got issues, that's a pretty hefty repair. You got to dig that stuff down. So usually eight, nine feet down. Right? So I had to do it, believe me. We did a house in Baltimore, so the tree was right outside the sidewalk. The filled with roots, I got pictures. We pulled out almost 15 pounds of, of, of roots and dirt out of there. We had to dig all the way underneath the sidewalk, close down the sidewalk, close down half the street, go all the underground, go into the house underneath the foundation, take out the whole pipe, put in a brand new pipe all the running out to the street. That's yeah. You know, so, so I mean, it's just, you just got to be, look at the age of the house, look at where the house is located, look at any tree lines, you know, look at all these things to, to you know, kind of just estimate when you do inspections and things like that. Right. Right. Any questions so far? Make sense? Right. It's good stuff? Mm -hmm. he told, did he tell you what he did? No. For which bank? 
first reading for the lady. You know, a lot of banks that the bank we work with. So you're like a third party? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought about that, but they don't pay you nothing. Yeah, do a lot of work. You get paid. Yeah, and then you gotta encourage the invoice. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. 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 You tell me, you should eat more. She knows. She knows? Yeah. And she ain't got no shorts? I don't think, I don't know what the situation is. I don't know is. what the situation yeah. is. Mm. That's sad. Mm -hmm. Took me six months to have, for her to actually list it. Wow. She, she was, old there? She's going to thank her back. I don't know. Uh, well, oh, you got to have a cigar, man. You got to have a cigar. I love cigars. All right, um, okay, so that's the stuff, right? And, uh, okay, granted, so when you do it, have, have a pack, this is $3. When these batteries die, just throw, throw it away, get yourself another one. It's mm -hmm. anything expensive, but, you know, have that. Or your granite, we're going to talk about granite. And, um, we're going to talk about backsplashes yeah. and, and ceramic tiles, okay? So, most women want a nice kitchen and a nice bathroom, and that's what sells the product, right? So, a lot of times, you know, again, you, know, you could spend $2,500 or you could spend $4,500, $2,000 difference, it really makes a big impact on the finished product. So, the finished product is what sells the house, not what's behind the wall. You can't see what's back there, right? So the, on the third phase, which I call the third phase, which is the finished side, you have to pay real close attention because that is what you want to deliver, is the third phase. So, so not to cut you off, what are the first two phases? Well, you got your demolition, get it all out, mm -hmm. look at the structure of the house, look at the bones of the house, right. look at the grading, look at to see if there's any water issues, the leaning, Look at the joists, look at the bones, mm -hmm. look at your mechanical, your electrical systems, look at your HVAC systems, mm -hmm. and look at your plumbing systems. Because once the, the, at that phase, you can take stuff down, move stuff around. Okay, because it's still in the first and second phase. Mm -hmm. Look at your main drain, look at all these things. If you got to bust the concrete open at that time, bust it open. But you get in the third phase, and you're like, oh shit, I got to go backwards? Oh man, it's going to cost you more money. So that's, you know, first phase, you know, demolition, you get the guys in there, you know, in a week they can have it cleaned out, and if you say, okay, push this wall out, take this wall out, okay, uh, move this out, then you come back, everything's done, now you can say, look at the floor plan, and you can determine, okay, now I can see what I'm working with, I'm working with the 25 by 25, right? And then you, you have to have vision to say, okay, with this particular space, how am I going to lay this out? How am I going to... I'm going to work this in. Okay, I know there's a support beam here, so i got to have columns to hold up the support beams. Right? Okay, well, all right, so there's the main door over there. So you got to kind of look at the whole space to see, you know, how, how, if you was living in this house, what you would want to do. Would you want to live here? Would you want to put your sofa here? Put your TV here? You know, kind of you have to visualize that. Right? right? Do, I want to, do, I, do you want an island here? Do you want to be able to look when people walk into the house? You don't have your back turned to people. Right? So you got to visualize that. So when you do the first phase, clean it all out, then you can say, okay, well, I'm going I'm to push this wall out two feet, and I'm going to turn it to this way so I can open up the hallway. Then once you do your framing, then you know, okay, I'm going to put an outlet here, I'm going to put an outlet there, I'm going to put a three-way switch here, I'm going to put a two-way switch here, so when you come upstairs, you don't have to go back downstairs to get the light. So now you got to do your electrical design on how you're going to run your wires. Is that phase two? Phase two. Because the walls are open and exposed. And you, you've already looked at the joists and the studs. So that's when you want to say, okay, I'm going to put it. If you know you're in the bathroom, 
you got to drop in your GFIs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know the tub going to go over here, the sink's going to go over here. Okay, so I'm going to put a GFI here. And if you decide to do like skunks, if you, again, you got to see what the product going to look like. Then you say, put two skunks here, so you know you got to run a wire here and run a wire here. What is that GFI? Like, what? No, go ahead. Like a safety glove for near like when it's water. Okay, okay. Just, gotcha. That's where we got the like, gotcha. Okay. All right, so GFIs cost more money. Okay, so GFIs, uh, about 20 to $25. A piece? Yeah. A piece? Yep. The good ones. Now, don't get no cheap oh, shit. You get the cheap ones for $9, $8. Mm -hmm. But again, man, two, three years, kids burning up, somebody knocking on your door because of $7. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, damn, I should have put that $7 in. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it right. Right? So, or the GFI, and then also the GFIs, if you've got two in the kitchen, you have to run the wire to a separate dedicated breaker. Mm -hmm. Okay? You got, you, got, you got dedicated breakers. A lot of times if you got a GFI, you connect this GFI to this outlet here, and then this outlet here, and this outlet here, and this thing resets, well, these outlets ain't going to work. I've seen that. Right? Because pulling too much load is pulling too much current off that. Mm -hmm. So you got reset, yeah, if you get reset, you know. Yeah. Either you didn't run the wire right, you put in a separate breaker. Yeah, so, so that phase two, you, you get your electrical out the way. If you decide you're going to put a chandelier for your dining room area, this is going to be your dining room area, then you say, okay, I'm going to measure this out. Boom, put a chandelier right here in the middle, they're going to put a table right here. Okay, we'll figure out where you're going to drop the wires at. Okay, then once all that's done, you got your plumbing, you say, okay, I'm going I'm to put a shower on this side, I'm going to put my hot and cold, I'm going to run my shower head here. So then you got your, your plumbing done. Okay, then you're closing the walls up and going to start going to phase three. That's when you start doing your tile, your backsplash, your floors, your paint, your carpet. Then the finishes start coming in. Okay, that area is very important because that's what they're going to see. Yeah, that's where you see the shabby work. Right. So now the problem, it hit them, not a problem, but you should have somebody else other than you coming in to look at the third phase, like a woman or somebody. Because we know they got a better eye than us. Right? At the finished product. At the finished product. Because women are the ones that buy the home. Mm -hmm. Women are the ones that buy homes. Men, they just need a place to sleep and lay down. Right. Work and come home, supper ready. You know, take a shower and go back to work. Right? So they're the 67, 80% of people that make decisions. So we, we're catering to colors, color schemes finished products, you know, you don't want to do purple walls and blue bedrooms and, you know, neutral. So, I use light tone colors, right, but also you look at the number of windows. So if you got a living room area, you got one, two, three, four windows, so you got a lot of natural light coming in, right? So then, then you want to look at it, is there a lot of light from there? Oh, 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 oh. This is my hey, Albert. Hey man. Oh, okay. Is she gonna call me back? Okay, man. Hey, Clint, uh, this guy's gonna call back. He's getting a, a, a patient of water heater. Mm -hmm. He's at Home Depot, so give him the credit card number to pay okay. uh, I have it. Hey. Albert. Albert's gonna work right here. It's nice to make money and still have fun at it. But um, yeah, so the, the windows, you look at the windows, man, and um, you know, if you decide to do your, I don't know about paint swatches, but your paints and your colors and all that stuff, you know, um, get two or three people think you, or like John was says earlier, go and look at other finished product that's your competition. And it's a beauty concept. Yeah. And I do that a lot. I go and I and I go and I look to see. Okay, if this guy didn't put no backsplash, or he used white appliances, mm -hmm. or he didn't do crown molding, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So then I go back, so I'm, I'm going to drop in my black, so stainless steel, crown molding, shadow boxes. And I, I think the light one, because a lot of them, finished product out there is all dark. Yeah. I like the light one. Yeah. And the light one opens up the house. Mm -hmm. It makes the house look bigger. Mm -hmm. The dark closes, you know, closes. Yeah, now, if you're in the basement, 
you know, there's, most people are trying to use the basement area for like a bar, or wet area, or entertainment. That's something. But you have, again, with the basement, be careful. You know, don't, don't go super, super dark in those areas. Again. Right. You know, um, so the granite will, you know, you have like granite. You have class A granite. You have class B granite. And you got class C granite. There's a different price for each class. Okay? So class A granite will be anywhere from $55 to $65 a square foot. Okay? Class B is going to be anywhere from like $50 to like $42, $44 a square foot. Is it just a price difference? Well, and it's, it's the also the, 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 the colors. The colors. So it's not the quality of the product? No, because most price. all granite is going to be three and a quarter. It's all going to be three, three and a quarter inches. Now, well, be careful. Well, there's some stores uh, will try to give you a half inch slab. Right. Those half inch, you, they're going to be like, oh, our price is $27 a square foot, but you get a half inch. You sit on it, it's going to crack. Yeah, right. You know, so it should be three and quarters. Right. Okay? So, again, you know, when you're doing granite, again, you want, you want to be able to Make sure your if you do the backsplash, you do the tiles, you do the granite. You got your your colors of your cabinets. You got the you know the colors of the hardwood floors. Then you got the colors. Of, it's like the whole picture's got to come together, right? It's just all got to come together. Make sense. <laughs> so and the same thing with bathrooms. And the same thing with the bathrooms. It's like all the pictures got to come together. Now, if, they, if, the, if the guys do uh, custom tile work, where they put on a, on, a, on, a, on a diamond angle, rather than just, just straight 12 by 12s, mm -hmm. okay, that's, that just looks so plain. A lot of my work is custom. I do custom diamonds. I put, uh, inside the bathrooms, I put in uh, like shower bottles where you could take a shower. Yeah, I see. Right. And then I put stools, like I like to sit down in the bed, take, bring my bed, take a shower. Yeah, so. I put, you seriously, I, I got my little stool at house. <laughs> and, but no, it's good though because my wife should put a leg on it, wash a leg. So I put like little stools, um, and then I got a little holder. I got two holders, one for her, but she puts her stuff. I keep my, my beer in there. <laughs> but it's cool though. It's like it's decorative. Yeah. You, know, you got to be different. Personal. Yeah, and so I do like a lot of diamonds and things like that. But again, people see the finishes, and the finishes are what's going to set you different from your 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 competitions out there. So the goal for all buyers is that they want a, a moving ready product. They, don't, they want to move in, they want to put their bags down, they have to get the house clean, and boom, they want to live. Now most things for sellers is sometimes their kitchen is just outdated. You know, and, and by providing extra five to seven thousand dollars, they could get thirty-five, forty thousand dollars extra. And for investors, you know, our goal is to, is to uh, have a good solid product that we can put a brand on it. And people say, you know what, that is a, a brick front property home. I bought that 10 years ago. Right? And be proud of your stuff. Right? So, but uh, any questions so far? Is it good? Good information? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's my first class to go like this. For real? A construction class. I usually do an investment class, but this is my first construction class. Right. It was Clint's idea. Because I asked Clint one day he was having a beer. I said, Clint, I said, what the hell are most people out there looking for? He said, they don't know how to do a construction budget. Nope. And, and I said, really? Because to me, it's natural. So I'm thinking what's natural to me is natural to everybody else. Yeah. Right? And then he's like, no. He goes, I said, okay, well, shit. We, I, have, we actually have a cheat sheet that I grabbed from someone. The construction. Like, um, Floor by floor, section by section. The one in the pool. What is it called? The inspection sheet. The inspection sheet. Inspection sheet. But it, does that have a cost of material and stuff? I think so. It is broken down. Yeah, broken. This might be the inspection sheet. I think I just from the attorney. Mm -hmm. We gotta show it if you can see it's all broken down by by room. Okay. All right. Cool. But um, right, so, so far it makes sense. Um, and oh, I, I told Clint I was gonna put this. We buy houses, 
They claim get this on the camera. We buy houses cash. <laughs> 14 days or less, give us a call. Who's, but yeah. Who's, who's number? That's you guys? That's the office number here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's the office number. That's a small so, Huh? That's Clint's handwriting. Right. So here's the thing. So here, here, okay. I started off as a contractor, okay, building homes, um, and then I dealt with a lot of bad contractors that stole a lot of my money and did things wrong, and, and I had a lot of inspection issues when the buyer came in. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to find them, they were gone. And then I had to pay another contractor to go back and fix all this stuff. So a lot of this stuff I learned the hard way, right? So yeah, and then so then I became a, a, a full-time investor, just doing more of my own stuff, right? And then um, I started dealing with a lot of bad agents that, that that didn't really know how to work with investors. Okay, our number one goal as investors is to flip our cash. If I put in eighty-five thousand dollars in this house, I want to get my eighty-five thousand dollars back as soon as possible with my markup. I don't want that thing riding out for 90 days to 120 days. Right? So so be careful on how you choose your real estate agent that's gonna represent your product. So since you have had experience, all your experiences, what would you how what would you recommend to an agent how to work with an investor? Be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable of, of this stuff. Be knowledgeable of what the what the outcome is? What is the what is the investor's ultimate goal? What is the bottom line? Right? Is to move his money. Is to move his product. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that consistently for that guy, mm -hmm. he will give you five, six, seven, eight, nine other listings, and he's going to give you other clients. So the way I look at it, like this: if he hires me to represent his product, and 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 oh, let's just rewind the tape. I like you know rewind the tape. So let's say he bought a foreclosure from me, or a house that needs uh, to be repaired. So he gets into the property, and then I, I come to the job and like, hey, what's going on, Corey, everything cool? And I'm, I'm guiding him, I'm guiding him through the process. I'm guiding him through the process. Hey, man, you know what? You should consider maybe changing your kitchen layout, or maybe you should do this. Because, you know, people need guidance, right? You know, I like the way you're doing this, man, but maybe put the sink on this side. And you're kind of involved through the process. You come back two weeks later, and then now he's about to do something with the granite. You know, you're giving him ideas. Mm -hmm. But also, at the same time, you know that this house is going to get listed. It's just a matter of time. But you don't even know about it. Right? So that's a private listing. A so now you're working with the guy. Guess who the, who the guy going to end up giving you the, list, the, the listing to? Right. The person that's been engaged and involved and helping throughout this decision. But you, as the agent, if you're good... You should already be marketing this property. And let's say, y'all can say, Corey, man, look, I already got me a buyer for this house. He's like, what? I said, yeah, I got two buyers already. When are you going to be done? I'm going to be done two weeks. I look, I'm going to bring the guys by. He's going to be like, damn. Sold this house, he got his money back. And because I know he's about to finish his listing, this property, he's an investor. He's going to buy another one. He's going to buy another one. So when I know he's going to the third phase, I'm like, check out this house, man. Check out this house. Check out this one. So I'm feeding him more deals because he want to flip his cash and go to the next deal. So now I'm feeding him my, my, my input, and I'm involved throughout the process, and I'm giving him the next deal. So now I made money on the buy side. And then I made money on the listing side, right? And then I just gave him another deal, so I made money on the buy side. I'm going to make money on the listing side. So that one client could give you 10, 12 deals in a year. In a year. Mm -hmm. Most people don't do that. No. They'll sell on the foreclosure. They walk to the next one. They walk to the next one. That's it. They treat them, they treat an investor buyer like a retail buyer. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So um, that's another class that I was, we're going to do for agents. But for our agents here, we're going to do it for free. Because I want all the agents to understand on how to work and provide the, the NOI on the investment. How to do the due diligence for them on their behalf. How to, how to run the numbers in the CMAs and to show, okay, Mr. Investor, you buy this for 100 you put in about a 50 the ARB is going to be 229 
Here's going to be your holding costs. Here's what's going to cost you to get out of this deal. Here's going to be your net profit. And I bring this to him. He's going to be like, damn, see? And you know what? We're going to take several weeks to get this thing done for you, man. I like this net construction here, bro. That's, that's how you do it. You like it? Oh. Yeah, what? Give me some feedback. Yeah. It makes sense, right? So that's how you do it, you know. Uh, but in a lot of these first-time home buyers, you know, they they window shop there. They kick in tires. They take a lot of your time. They're undecisive. Uh, they want to look at 50, 60 houses. I like this one, but I don't like the colors. I like this one. The kitchen too small. I like this one. You know, if you got plenty of time to to work with them, then hey, you know. Do it. But I look at time value of money. So time value of money means I try to make as much money as I can every single minute, every single hour, every single day. Time, my time is extremely valuable. What God has given us is time. If it's 80 years, 90 years, or 10 years, or 40 years, it's what we do with our time. We, we could waste it or we could use it properly. And, and, and we could get the ultimate dream, which is freedom, mm -hmm. and have plenty of money to, to which allows us access to that. Right. So okay, so Clint, what time is it? We gotta go over to the house. Yeah, it's about one fifteen. Okay, so let's let's go over to the house. Yeah, no questions. No. Then most likely we'll have questions when we get okay. to the house. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, to give, give me a testimony. Or tell me if I did a good job or a bad job. How would you say I did? One out of five. Give me a five. Give me a five. five, five, five. All right. Would you guys recommend your suggestions to other people because I need more money? Yes, yes, of course. All right, cool. And it, it was worth it, the price? Yes. Okay. My goal is to, is to is like, I want you guys to come here to be good agents here. And, and, and you know, my thing is that I create enough value and knowledge for you guys. You would have more of those things and more stuff, and therefore I'll make more money off of that. And not only that, but on the, on the, on the wholesale side, too. I mean, we do what we learn this. You're getting deals. Exactly. Your business. Exactly. Yeah. The thing is, man, I'm not a greedy dude. We sharing everything here. We we sharing stuff. You know, that's that's just the way I've always been. That's that's my culture. That's the way I was brought up. When we grew up in that village, we brought up and raised it as sharing and, and, and working together as a, as, a, as a unity. You know, and we gotta help our kids that, that they ain't doing shit. We gotta get them back to work and get them involved. Yeah, you know, we we are giving them. They're getting very light. Oil. Oil, there it is. All right, well, brick front properties and construction. Uh, we're going to go out to the property and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll catch up on that side. Okay, let's go ahead. How do you go to North Carolina? His brain works kind of like mine. Yeah. And then we got you, you need to come. You should show him yours. Mine, Matt. You might have to find it. From paper, you have to go over to. You got to implement. It's, it's good to, to put on paper because then you take it out of your head. Mm -hmm. Step one, take it out of your head, put it on paper. And then when you see it, then it becomes, you have something to work towards. Mm -hmm. And then once you say, okay, I've done this, then you build on that and build on that. It's, it's a process. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of stuff with the military, uh, my own stuff. Just, you got to keep in mind, there's a lot of soldiers coming home. Mm -hmm. Okay? In the next two years, a lot of these military folks will need either to rent or to own. And VA loans are a lot easier than, than FHA loans to work with. Mm -hmm. right? So one of the programs that we're doing is called Home for Heroes. And the Home for Heroes program is where we're giving back to the military families, where we'll give additional stuff, additional warranty. We'll, we'll put in a new kitchen for them for half the cost. We'll pay some of their closing costs. We'll give additional buyers and sections. Okay. But yeah, but if they want a stainless steel kitchen or if they want us to do a different type of bathroom or if they want us to, you know, do something different, we'll be giving more value to the to the military families. Even school teachers, firefighters, police officers, you know, anybody that's public servant, so the program is home for heroes, is to give back to the community. You know, so it's all about giving back. I mean, you, you won't keep taking the taking together. Mm -hmm. Don't start back and do it for us. 
And so we'll show on this side of the house where the next stage office is. You don't play no football? I did in school. All right, what y'all have stuck with it? Huh? So what y'all have stuck with it? Yeah. All right, so that's where Dieter sits. That's where Clint sits. Uh, this is Clarissa sits here, and Jennifer sits here. Uh, that's our server room. This room keep all the computers in our back of the servers, and then that's our next stage office. So here's all the um, all the different listings we're working in now. Here's all the listings we have in the system now. Um, yes, we have a lot of listings there. And these are all the agents that are here that are licensed. Any of these listings already on the contract? Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly certain. Johnny Baker's the broker here, so he runs the broker's office. He's got a couple of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was there a check-out on the contract? Oh, there you go. So we're licensed for DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So this is the next day's side. So, um, yeah. okay, so, um, all right, let's go to the other property then. And they've got down on like in-house negotiator too, huh? Oh, we got our own short sale negotiator. We got our own lawyers, we got our own title companies. Uh, and we do our own inspections. We got our own construction company. We got our own brokerage now. Everything's in house. Everything's under one roof. Everything's under one house. There's a lot of added value here. Remax, Long and Foster, none of these guys are offering what we're offering. And the fact that I'm personally teaching and training and adding value to you guys, because I want you guys to be really good out there. And I want you to be different. All right, so there's a lot of value here for, for That's why a lot of agents are going to be coming over here, because they can see the benefits. All right? Go. All right, we're going to go to the property now. We'll sell these trailer cars and get all the money. All right? All right. So, okay. who want to be the camera guy? What do you want to do? For right now? No, not now. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so look, here we are, and this is the phase two of the class. We're at 33, uh, 13. What's this? Barcroft. Okay, Barcroft. All right, so we're going to do the exterior. Uh, first, okay, so in terms of the exterior, when you guys are here, you know, you want to look at, you know, of course, look at the gutters, okay, look at the windows, look at the structure of the home, and then we're going to walk around, look at the grating. You see the, the grating is going towards when it rains, so we're going to look at the grating. So let's, and then let's see if we see any other cracks, like the cracks right here, the sidewalk. Okay, so the bottom line is act like a home inspector. Is there a sheet that you usually use or anybody on the team use? I've got, I've got, I've got all kinds of stuff in the office. I've got all kinds of stuff. I just, it's all here. I've yeah. got so many, but I can, you can put something together and all that. Um, but when I, when you sell the house, they're going to have a home inspection. If you dress all the issues up front, then the house is going to be safe and healthy and you're going to be okay. So look at some eyeglasses up like that. So you know this is all come up from the house away. Okay, so make a note for something like this. You know, it's not it's not too bad. So if you power wash this thing, right? If you power wash it, and they see there's a there's a caulking too, the concrete. So you can fill these things in and then add some extra mulch and stuff, kind of hide the holes and stuff like that. Okay. Um, the siding. What? I, I see there was a rail here. Yeah. Normally, if it's got three steps, you should have. According to code, you should have a hand. And the outside of the house, so I mean like the wood trim, see how bad the wood trim is? Yeah. What okay. Would you, what'd you do with that? You would you um just I would change it. Oh, hold on to my plumber. Hey, um, Albert? You could just, you could, can't you just wrap it? Hold that? on. Okay, um trim. so how do yeah. I pay you? Right? My brother did it, but he said that. I'm going to push out his right of wood yeah. and he just wrapped it with some I know, but you're in Baltimore. Yeah. 
Right. So I'm over here in PG County. So can I mail you a check or do you take credit cards? So what do you want me to do? It's a nice house, man. Okay, I'll tell you what, let me What's finish this up here. Uh, 187. What's ARV around? What's ARV around? What's ARV around? All right. He said he has some punks. I know, let me tell you. So what's the first thing the buyers see when they walk up to the house? They see the front door, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that door is a pretty good door, okay? But the trim, now you can replace the trim and keep the door, it's got no dead for bruises. I would add a kicker plate right there and add a little gold blue box to paint it, do a new first floor paint, and just replace the trim around there and power wash the house. Mm -hmm. You yeah, yeah. replace the trim or like just wrap it with some of No, I'm, I'm going to take, take all this out. Take all out. This is rot, it's no good. Take all this out. And once you paint it and you put in new wood and you caulk it and you seal it up, it look brand new. Yeah, the door looks like it's pretty good. It's probably going to just get it painted. You got to get it painted, get it taped up. Okay, so the, the outside of the house, we do some power washing. Power wash the house, clean it up, seal the windows. If you notice some caulking coming off, seal the windows. If the wood is rotted, replace the wood. Oh, this one of his friends? All right, come on, we'll walk, walk, around, walk around the side. So, how about the, um, the windows? These windows here, would you be painted? Well, from the outside, they look good. Once we get inside, yes. then we're going to be checking the windows. Yeah, so this is what comes with sealing the windows, right? So, just like pulling the caulking off of here, okay? Resealing the windows, painting it, you know, clean it up, and I normally power wash everything. I power the brake, power wash the siding, and then once we do all that stuff, then the last thing we, you know, we want to do is, is put some mulch, cut the bushes back, take all these weeds out, these number of big weeds, and then add, maybe add like a border here, do like a flower bed, and then paint the shutters, paint the door, paint the gutters, paint the downspouts, give it a nice crisp white look, fresh clean. look, clean look. Do like those bricks, just to realign the bricks, realign the, uh, the mulch, cut the, cut the trees back a little bit, they look like they need to be trimmed, you know, make, make the house you can see the house. Right now the trees covering the house. You know? So the outside cover field is very important. So alright, we're gonna walk through. So in the gutter, notice on the corner of the house, you notice how there's this sand and the water's coming out and it's coming right in. Coming out, that's what's part of this hole. You should put an extension out there so the water goes away and then that line is stick. That's that water going right down. Right down to the foundation. You know, so all these things you want to look at, because then inside with that water gauge thing I got, you want to test that corner to see how much how much dampness is inside. So you can use it here too? No, not outside, inside. So yeah, that's that right there's gonna be a problem. And see how Looks like water's already hitting this area. Somebody stole the condenser. Yep. Right? Somebody stole the condenser. So because they stole the condenser, this this is you can't get FHA financing for this house. You still can, it needs to be fixed before they sell it. Yeah. They, they can fix it. You do FHA 23K. Oh yeah, 23K. Get right. a contractor come in here and, and I'm a FHA 23K contractor. Okay. So then I do this for a lot of real estate agents. Uh, yeah. So then we'll come out of here, we'll show the 30,000, 25,000, stay within the 35,000 limitations. It's 35, it's limitations on the, on the streamline is 35. Yeah. On the full, it's unlimited. Okay, so you know, look at all this stuff here. Look at the side of the house. Okay, so like, you notice, it looks like they're trying to do some here. Paint it, you know, look at it, get up there, get your light up there. Uh, inspect the roof from the outside as well as the inside. Yeah, looks like they, they replaced it one time. Yeah. Looks like a new piece to put in there. But it, see, these are the same things that inspectors will see. It's more trying to address whatever what they see out there. This, so the way I do it is, if you got a business card, right? This thick, if your 
business card will fit in there, then it's too, too big. But this, this, this block, but the, it's the concrete veneer that's on here. That's what's cracked. But if your business card goes in and it goes in all the way inside, that's a deep crack. That's a foundation. So this issue. one you can just. Cut this out. one, yeah, you can just, and then make, paint over it and clean it up. But, but that's that's not a big crack. They come up though, inspection. Yeah, but once you paint it, yeah, yeah. Like, they're not gonna be able to see it. Yeah. And you caulk, you put, you put some concrete on there, and, and it's not gonna be seen. Yeah. That makes sense. to look straight that's the only thing you learned? Huh? That's the only thing you learned? <laughs> well, I, I, I stick around, I, I go, I look around behind the home inspectors, from the home inspectors, so I can learn that. Alright, so you notice here, you see how there's a dip right there? There's a dip right there? Did you say dip? Dip. It, it looks like the water's probably just dropped and stayed down. The pipe reaches right there with the gutter. And sometimes you can walk, you can see the separation. Yeah. And if you can see through there, that means water's coming straight down. So if you stand here, you can see right there. You can see right between the gutter and the flashing board. So look, look straight up. So like that, you could you could just tie it back in there or Well what you gotta do is at that time you have to look at the flashing, the, the, the wood that's back there. If the wood is rotten, you gotta take the gutters off, replace, replace the wood. Them. Get it back real secure and then put your gutters back in. And sometimes the gutter screws that hold the gutters are rotted or rusted. Just go to Home Depot, get, get new screws and, and put them in there. Mr. Yeah, he's, he's a good downspout. The gutters look good. Like these sidings, they put those Yeah, they look good. No, those, those, oh, those dirt, dirt marks. No, those dirt marks. So they just power wash on that. If, if it's in your budget, maybe give it a nice paint. You know, paint it a little bit. Paint the side? Yeah, if it's in your budget, yeah. you know, get, a, get an exterior bucket and paint it. Right, you see, this is going to come up. You see those? See how there's a separation? There's a separation right there. That's going to come up. That's going to be addressed. How would you fix it? Okay, so you have to take a hammer chisel, remove all this 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 concrete right here. Concrete. This this this. You see, this is this that's is a filler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a filler. Okay. So once you remove all this, because you can't put in new with that's there, this is going to fall right out. Okay, so you got to you got you got to remove the old. Look at it, see what's really back there. Does this include this side of the yeah, so this 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 what they did that they used it like in the front of the steps the concrete they, they put this concrete tube in here. It's like oh. That's what they did. So remove about what two inches. I would yeah take it down and then once you can look what's back there, and, and, you know maybe sticking a two by four or one by one back there, and then put more concrete on there, seal it up, and then the access just caulk it off. You shouldn't see any gap between the siding and the wall. It should be all sealed up. Okay. Did that turn, can this, once you take that off, could that be a, a big ticket item or something behind there? Messed up? No. Can you see anything? You just, the filler? Yeah. Because the goal is to, is to sell the product, is to get rid of the product. The goal is to get rid of it. You see how they got us just leaning on the, mm -hmm. on the wall? Yeah. Okay. Everything is leaning. Yeah. 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 Everything is leaning. This might not be a B minus, B minus nigga. Take that one back. It is down the Okay, so here. So this is the dog. Alright, so the, the, the main wire, the main wire going to the house, the inspectors, the inspectors gonna catch this. Yeah. Okay? This is your responsibility to replace this wire. You got, you got to replace the wire. You got to replace the wire. And we'll, the home inspector will tell you. Yeah, they won't tell you. That there, there you, know, you got to get the electrician to you know, make sure they do it right. Oh, there's a beehive. Beehive in the electrical yeah. box. That's yeah. wow. And then like these outlets, you got to have a cover on these outlets. Especially outside. Okay, especially outside. You got to have a uh, uh, cover outlets. Okay? But that, that's, that right there is going to have to, that's probably like a $400 job, $500 job. Yeah. And this wire is expensive. 
What gauge is that? What is it like? This one is a six or eight. Six or eight. Depends on the on the ball. Alright. Alright, corner. Shout out for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. No, no, you gonna bend more than the steps than I am. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 My uncle, man, he's six. He's six. six. He dropped the shit out of me coming down the stairs. <laughs> <right? 'Cause> <laughs> Don't tall. say that while I heard you. <laughs> yeah, you should have said it while I heard you. He's too right. tall, so he tried to bend down, trying to take me downstairs. He ended up, he ended up coming down with me, man. That's the key point right Look, look. He's been dropped that out before, too. What? Oh, man, my uncle. <laughs> he's tall like him, and he bent down, uh -huh. taking me down the stairs, and it was just too much. He just came down with me. Wow. But then he came down with me because I hope they did it. Alright, so this is a split level house. Split yeah, boy? Yeah, split boy. Split for you. Not split level, it's the same thing. So now with this house, it's got a good room. Right? The functionality, you want to look at the functionality of the space. If, if you were living here, how would you utilize the space? You know what I mean? Again, you got your main door, you got access to the people in the dining room, you can see the kitchen, you can see people coming in and out the hallway, people going up there. So you always want to visualize that if you was here, what would be the purpose of this space? And you always want to utilize the space properly for its, its positioning. Right? So in this particular, I mean, this is a good space. I, I mean, I, I like it the way it is. Do you want to do anything else? I would, anything to it? you know, I, I like the way that I would add crown molding. Um, I would add uh, in the dining room chair rail molding. I would replace the dining room uh, chandelier. Um, and then if this right here is, is a low bearing wall. So I would, I, I would take this out, but keep the column here. Keep the column here for support. Yeah. Just take out the header. Okay. So that gives you more, makes the room look bigger. Yeah. yeah. You know, you take this, this unnecessary here. Um, and then in this room here, you know, I mean, this one have to, this one have to come out. But the walls and the ceilings look good. It's, right. You know, you want to run your hands over the walls, and you feel like little, little what I call, um, where are you? you can feel bumps in, in the little things. You want to sand all the walls down first. Get all this stuff off. Get all these nail holes out of there. Sand it all down, and then hit it with the primer, and then paint it. Okay, because okay, this. People feel that you want this consistency. These windows, and they, these are old, those are original windows. Yeah. All right, so the way I do it is basically one window is about $250 mm -hmm. to get it out and, and to put it in. Okay. So that's $500 right here easily. Now, if the trim in the wood outside is bad, when you take the window out and you can see what was really going on back there, then if the wood is bad, then that might be another $200. Okay. Okay, but if it's just simply taking out the window and the wood and everything is good, there's no rotted wood, none of it, mm -hmm. and you slide it back so, in, you can get a window for like 150 to like 180 mm -hmm. and at about 100, 125 dollars to install each window. So when you when you're doing your budget, if you don't know if the wood is bad, would you just budget that in? Exactly. Yeah. So you talk about four hundred dollars a window. Yeah. Now those big windows, those are bay windows. Those are going to be a lot more money. You know what I mean? So though, if you just stick with math, you got 10 windows, and if, if the house seems like the bones and things are good, 10 times three, that's $3,000, right? Okay. right? If you want to do 10 times four, that's, that's $4,000, mm -hmm. right? And then the window grading, like, you know, you have glass, you have double pane, you got single pane, so, you know, the window, based on the manufacturer or the kind or the quality that you get, it's also gonna affect your cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna put Anderson windows, because those Anderson windows are high. So what do you what what what? How do you determine what windows you want to put in? Or is it just a standard that you put in a well, certain it, type of window? It, get, it goes back to the into the neighborhood, the quality of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Goes back to where you bought it at, where your cost is going to go into it, where you're going to sell it at. Mm -hmm. So you want to look at all those things, mm -hmm. right? 
If you bought it low enough, then you can make put in a higher grade. Mm -hmm. But if you bought it, well, and you, and so you got to look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so this kitchen already has this, has an opening. Um, you know, so I would take out this, put the granite in, mm -hmm. put my support beams under here, put like some chair rail molding. Would you lower it? Huh? Would you lower it? It is a bit high. Yeah, it's supposed to be right uh, mm -hmm. So this right now is 50. So te technically it should be between 44 and 47. It's right. right about here. That's so right now it's about that much higher. You know. She can't see up with it. She didn't have a shoe on. <laughs> <laughs> For you, it's okay. Yeah. But this kitchen is functional, you know what I mean? It's, it's functional. I mean, at least the cabinets are never bad. Yeah. I will add the backsplash. You were asking about the GFI. Yes. So whenever you're next to the water, yeah. okay, you have to have GFIs in the kitchens and the bathrooms. The water will splash into the outlet. That's mandatory. But those are not GFIs. Yes. They don't no. have the accessories on, right? These are not. These are not. Okay. Yeah, these are regular. So why would they let them pass? Is it because it's an older house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, whoever's going to buy it, mm -hmm. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's going to come up. Yeah, it's going to come up. It would have to come up. Now, would you leave this counter or would you no. change that? Uh, granite. No, no. Uh, yeah, uh, granite. So, would you leave the counter? No. Uh, no. What do you do? Like, these cabinets are in good shape. What do you do with these? Well, so I, would, you know, I would maybe put them in the laundry room. So, so Recycle them somewhere in the house? Yeah, maybe put them in the garage. Mm -hmm. You could put tools inside there. In the laundry room, you could put your det uh, uh, detergent. Right. You know what I mean? You can use it for your, your light saws, your bathroom cleaners. Mm -hmm. I would just reuse them and clean them up. You know what I mean? And, and then you yeah, If it. you didn't have a seat somewhere for this house, would you, you have somewhere to keep this stuff? I, I, I got three acres of land oh. where I have my shed. I got my vans and trucks. I keep a lot of them on the tours there mm -hmm. off, off of Capitol Heights. Mm -hmm. Would you put um, more lighting in here? Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would put recessed lights. Okay. How, how, why not recess lights over in the? Uh, now we do recess like throughout the the house, the top floor. Top floor. Yeah. What would you do with this empty space here? But well, this kind of this this will have to come down. So I could put in a thirty inch base here and have the countertop come up and then have it go up and have like an island like a breakfast bar on this side. So then you have another area to chop. You know, you got another countertop area, mm -hmm. and then you got another twenty four inch deep cabinets to put your pots and pans. You know, things like that, so I would utilize the space in that manner. The floor? That would have to come up. Yeah. So right about check out the carpet would come up. And then, then you could would, If you want to take out the carpet, then I guess leave it hard. Is hard there wood? Is there, is there for wood, wood carpet? You can that? pull back the carpet. The corners of the carpet, you can pull back and determine if there's hard wood there. Do that corner. That's why you should carry your knife. You can, you can cut a little corner and you can pull it back. You know what I mean? So, uh, no. No. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's nice. That's some floors. That's some floor. Mm -hmm. So would you would you you put hardwood on this floor, right? Uh, yeah, yep. Cause you want to, you know, again, the finished product is what's gonna sell. Right. So your finished product is gonna sell. So hardwood floors, right, recessed lights. Yeah, I mentioned this. So you can walk it out. You can be able to step it out. Cause again, you want to get quick estimates. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be to the penny, cause you never know if you're gonna get the house. Yeah. Cool. You know, I mean, spend twenty minutes. Okay, I'm gonna drop thirty in here. I'm gonna drop fifteen in here. Drop ten in there. Total cost forty five. Numbers don't work. Keep moving. Yes, I do. Right. All right. So, um, and I would put the backsplash in here and put a new appliances. Um, you already got a pantry. Women love pantry. I mean, canned goods and crackers and everything. No, 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 that door's too narrow. It's a pantry though. It don't matter. When you got you got no space to do a refrigerator over here. It's well, it's a pantry. It's a space. <coughs> Hall closet. I would replace the doors. Put in six panel doors. These doors are old, inundated doors. And the best way to do the doors is to just yank them out and get the ones that are already pre-hung. Because you know you look at 
Material cost, you get a slab for $27, or you get the pre hung door for $67, all right? So the cost of the material might be cheaper if you just buy the slab, whereas if you buy, but the labor is going to take longer, right? So look at the labor cost as well as the material cost. So speed of, uh, what was it saying? Speed of implementation. Yeah. How you say it? Speed of implementation. There it is. But you, you want to get it done, click. The, the goal is to get the money, get the, move the money, move the money. Get it back to the market. This, get, get this out. trim, you be taking this trim off? Take the trim, trim out, trim put, in the, put in the four inch trim, the new trim. Four inch trim. Yep. Again, these are the things people going to see. Yeah. How about the trim around the door? I mean, the window. Yeah, that, that would take all that out. Oh, that's the what would you replace that with? <coughs> That's old travel. What, what are those, the, the, the little corner, <coughs> the little square, what are those Yeah, called? it's basically decorative pieces. Yeah, what's, what's the name for it? Little squares. Just little squares? Yeah. Right. I mean, they got like five, you six, seven it. different kinds. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you can put them. Yeah, you can put run the crown mold and put a thing in the corner. You can put, you know, you, but like again, it's, yeah, it's just little corner pieces, little squares, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, and here's your your bathroom. So you can play all the trim. Yeah, I was I was getting out of the yeah. yeah. It's just it's faster. Yeah. yeah. In the bathroom, I'll get the whole bathroom out. Whole bathroom. Take everything out. You mean gut it all the way to the bone? Take it out. To the bone. Yeah. Well, now look at the bone. 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 Look at the the, the, the top, take all of that stuff out. Okay, and here, we run hardwood throughout the hallways and the carpet in the bedroom. Exactly. Because in the winter time, you know, you get out of bed, it's yeah, 25 yeah. degrees outside, you want to step on some, some carpet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cold. Yep. So, and, and adding the, the hardwood coming through the hallway, it, it adds value. Yeah. Okay. So this room don't have no light. Yeah. So I would, I would uh, this is a master, so I would put in the ceiling fan. You know, ceiling fans are $52, $75. It, yeah, nice ceiling fans add value mm -hmm. and, and it, it, people like them. Yeah, they love ceiling fans. They love ceiling fans. Nice ones. Yep. And you notice this window don't have no trim around this window. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So I would add my trim around here. Okay. Dress it up. Dress it up and replace the, the blinds. I would get my little rod, put it right here, put some drop some curtain drapes, drapes down here. Dress up the window. <clears throat> You so, know, so you basically you gotta know how do you factor in budget for your trim and stuff? Why your trim? Well, okay, you the, gotta the, measure. You measuring everything out or not? You just well, the, the grade. There's a uh, bundle, builder's grade. Mm. So you know, it's a bundle. So you get a whole bundle like eighty square feet, okay. and the bundle's like eighty dollars. So I just mm -hmm. buy four or five. If I got some extra, I got an extra for next job. Okay. You know, you gonna have some extra materials. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have to buy more, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and now we replace the closet doors. Right. Those, I mean, they were good at one time. They just, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And that's the master, so when we redo the whole master. But why are you doing that? Couldn't you whiten up the door? That's not when I'm in space. Yeah, because you got the outlet, you got your switch right here. You can, oh, you can move it over, but why not go through the expense? No. She talking for me, but no. No, I always, oh, okay. I always pay close attention to it. Yeah. Because I have. I mean, because you gotta, you, you, you yeah. can maybe, maybe move it over another four or five inches. You know, right now, this is a 24 inch door. So you can maybe. Oh, that's the regular size 24. For these little holes. Yeah. You know, did you see? Would you do the stand up shower here or tub? I would, uh, well, this is the master, right? So it depends on the cost, and it depends on how much everything else is gonna cost. In the master, I will put always the bigger tiles, make this one into more better. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because this is where the king and the queen gonna be. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So. I but for being a master, it's kind of small. But it's a master. A lot of homes don't even have masters. Yeah. It's shared by everyone. Keep in mind, we're not an A. We're not in the A neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 in the neighborhood where it's a appropriate product for this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So you gotta get like that. You never want to overbuild. And so for this area, you have a master, you know, you got this room, kids ain't gonna share this, you know, so people will eat this up. Yeah. So. <clears throat> three. Is that three, two? Three, 
these are pretty big, big dancers, so you don't want to get stuck. Right. Yeah. And the thing is, you already got the you already got the switch. So you're just dropping the wire. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put a junction box. This is a nice size closet. It's a nice size closet, nice size room. Don't don't get stuck with them. Whole houses in 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 some of those areas where the bedrooms are eight by eight, mm -hmm. seven by. Six. Most people got at least a queen size bed, mm -hmm. and they got a dresser. They got two end tables. So you want to keep all that in mind. Because most people, you know, they, they, they're, not, they're not little people anymore. Back in the day, full bed just, or a twin bed mm -hmm. would be fine. Mm -hmm. But exactly. he, he, exactly. he, yeah. he can't sleep for yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. So you need at least a king. So you know a king's going to come out about here. Uh, who? A king? I mean, a queen. A queen. A queen. A queen. Oh, there's a queen. 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 A a cable drop. Cable drop. It's got a telephone, but there's no cable here. So you do the cable. Yeah, they don't do cable right now. They didn't. Yeah, but you can. <laughs> I mean, I have a cable guy, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it depends on the house. And once the walls, if all the walls have to be opened, I'll run the cable. Right. Okay. Yeah. But if I'm not opening the wall, I'm not gonna drop it in. Mm -hmm. Call Comcast. Yeah, call Comcast. <laughs> so these are these are some good good house. You house? Huh? You here already? Might as well did the inspection. How much is listed for? One eighty-seven. This is not Bowie. What what area this is this? Um, so the list is Upper Marlboro. Yeah. <coughs> Two zero seven seven four. Seven four, right? What's up here? Ladova Heights. Ladova Heights. Ladova Heights. Ladova Heights, right. 220. 220. Yeah. 230. That's hot. Yeah, this is hot. Yeah. This is a good one. They're looking for retail. They pay 2 or 3 k tonight. 287. Isn't that? Huh? 187. 187. How long is the list? 80. 80 days. 80 days. No price drop. Now keep in mind, a lot of these banks these days, they're buying the property, basically they own the property once it's foreclosed, they're sending it to their own contractors. Yeah, and they're getting it dressed up. A and they're getting it dressed up, and they're they 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 trying to sell it. Yeah. 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 So it's I know it's that. But they'll do probably the minimum. Yeah, yeah. 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 carpet paint. Oh yeah, paint. Paint. carpet paint. paint. And, that's and that, it. Now that's it. And people buy, as long as it's mm -hmm. going past inspection and pass an appraisal, they'll buy it. As long yeah. as a, a bank's going to lend on it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, so this probably won't go to a lot of the We just got approved for the HUD. Mm -hmm. So we can bid on HUD homes now. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are HUD there's certified. Not, there's not many oh, HUDs on the online. online. You're in and out of them all day, all but they're, day. Not, they're, off, they're not on the market. So. Not, they will be. They will be, yeah. yeah. But they like, I don't know. Don't don't know. Well, you got to be in the system every day looking yeah. at the, the HUD system. Right. You, you can pick some good ones, but you got to be, you got to have somebody focused. Like just every day, just looking and looking. But you can find some nuggets in there. Mm -hmm. They got like they 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 usually don't do investor office like later. They don't usually start out. With yeah, they usually fifteen yeah, to twenty yeah, days. Yeah, or more than that. Yeah, give those people the right. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, like these walls look good. The ceilings look good. I will add the uh, ceiling okay. fans, six by six panel doors. Mm -hmm. You do trim in here? You trim? No, I'm not yeah. in here. Uh, just no, the just no walls. Walls. Mm -hmm. I would leave that trim that's in there, paint it up. Mm -hmm. So you, you go on, trim long, you go in there. Yeah, because that's the main, the, main, yeah, okay. the main area. And crown loading only in the, in so the, the, like the living room? Damage. Living room. Would you bring it yeah. up? I would bring it to the hallway. Oh, you would? I wouldn't do it in the bedroom. Maybe the master bedroom I would do it, because that's where the king and the queen will be. Mm -hmm. So in there, I would throw some crown molding in there. Right. You know, dress mm -hmm. that up. But in these second and third bedrooms, Nah. Mm -mm. Paint, yeah. floors, yeah. windows, yep. closets, doors. Exactly. Alley. Check the outlets. You know what I mean? Make sure there's, there's no shortages. Uh, for example, you got these yellow outlets. You be changing all these outlets. Yeah. Right. Change them out. The 22 cents. Yeah, ain't nothing. Change, change them out. 
You know, and plus if, if you want to make it crisp and yeah, clean. clean. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have brand new paint, brand new carpet, you got yeah, old ass outlets. Yeah, that's awful. You know? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 22 so, cents, really? <clears throat> All right, we're going to go. Uh, All You know, check check all the smoke detectors, check the doorbell, right. make sure the doorbells bring in the smoke detectors, and make sure the smoke detectors got the carbon monoxide as well in, in, in the smoke detectors. Would you open this up for a sliding door so that you don't have I mean you're not gonna get your it depends if you got it for eighty thousand and you can sell it at two two thirty, two forty, mm -hmm. then yeah. But if you, you got it, you get it. Yeah, it depends where you get that. That would look nice. It, it would look nice. Not when you get it for 180. Yeah. You know, once you get 180, there's no value there. So the baddest that looks good, I would, you know, I would keep the baddest that we it's already clean. Right. Would you match? Would you stain that? No, no, I would keep office? this and match the floors with this. Right. But you, you would stain that though to match. The no, floor? this is this is good. This is clean. That's pretty clean, right? That's pretty so clean. you, oh, you match the floor color to that. Exactly. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, My mama told me that too. I'm smart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm people. My mom told me that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't feel too good about it. It's just a mother's thing. I think they're all supposed to be there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't drop me. Don't worry, man. We, one of us falling on your phone, man. Be all right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
clog it up. You know, clog it up so you could call a chimney company, have them come out, clean it, inspect it, and, and you could say the fire is, 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 is tested and works. The fireplace add value. Right. They do add value. Yeah, it's clean up. There's kind of brick cleaners. Yeah. Spray some acid stuff on there, take a wire brush, mm -hmm. hit up the wire brush. If you want to glaze it up, put a little glaze on it, give it a little, little shine to yeah. it. And the power wash this right here. They put a new, new, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. uh, motor in there. Now this popcorn ceiling, you scrape all this, all that stuff over. I don't like popcorn ceiling. No, no, no. I don't like it. Oh, you don't like it. Oh, you don't like it. Oh, yeah. So, so that's, I would just tear it down. Tear it down? So just already? Yeah. Just tear it down. How much? Just this area or the whole? The whole thing. Because you, you want to keep everything consistent. Yeah. Keep it all consistent. So you can't walk until it's done. No, no, walk. It's just a ceiling. Yeah. Walk through it. Your electric panel, you check out your electric panel. Okay? So you want to you know, check out the how many amps or you know make sure and you got plenty of space in it too if you want to make additional breakers and stuff. Yeah. Right. It looks like they painted over this thing. Yeah, you can't even tell how many yeah. amps. How many This is this is easily uh at least 150 right. more. Right. More. Yeah. You can tell by the wire outside? You can tell by the wire, you can tell by the breakers as well. Okay. You know, you can, you can count the breakers, it's over 100. Mm -hmm. You know, you got 15, you got 20, plus 20, plus 20, 20, 15. And then look at your, your uh, stuff. Is it gas or is it electric? Right, now we need the furnace. Yes. Right. Is, if, it's, if it's all electric, everything's electric, then you want to make sure this is at least 200. At least 200. If everything's all electric. Mm -hmm. But if it's split in the low, you got gas, and you got electric, the one thing is good. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, all right. You know what I mean? Nothing to the Let's go look at the, the, the furnace and look at the water here. Look at these things. Oh, you got that, that. Yeah. So they, they was in here, they took the coil off. Right. So something like this, I would call an HVAC company, have them come service it. Right. Have them look at it and service it. Left hand connected. You have them service, you want to put a new? No, because I would have them come service it, look at it, and they say, hey, look, you know, you need to fix these 10 items, then I will fix those 10 items. Right. Now the fact that, oh, there you go. There you go. Something is magic. This is like a wet room or what's this? Yeah, this is a laundry right here. Oh, hook up. Now, since the outside condenser is gone, right? Right. Yeah. So when you bring your HVAC person in here, and he's going to say, okay, well, this is what's wrong with it, and since that's gone out there, and when you can't, you can't just simply replace a condenser with yeah, the furnace. Yeah, it's yeah, got to match. Yeah, match. It's got to match. Right. So if you got a four-ton unit. You gotta have a four-ton compatible unit. So the family gotta be the same. If it's a carrier, use a carrier. If it's a caller, use a call. The family gotta be the same. Right. I mean, just to avoid problems. I mean, you could do other things. I've seen people do other things, and it's a there's a possibility. But you know, again, we want to do things the right Since way. And and you know, ten years from now, we won't be able to say that's a house we built. She go put carpet back here or just no, no, it's I'll, it's I'll, it's yeah. Better. And there's a drain, is there a drain back here? No. Oh. Full drain. Okay. But it looks like there's, there's a little bit of a leak in here. Is yeah, well, it's like it's a, like it's leaning a little bit. You see this wall here? Yeah, it's twisted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit. So we'll have but it looks like they built they, they built this. And then there's something, there's a leak yeah. there. Yeah. They built this and, and this is where they put the studs up but they didn't they didn't put the level. Because if they put the level the studs should have came out and it should have been a straight wall. So they, they, they messed up on the studs. So we just knock that down knock this, redo it? Redo it. Because the last thing you want to do is do all this good stuff. Then you come down here. And you look like that 89% I was talking about. Yeah. You do everything right 89% but then you, you fall short. Yeah. You fall short. And then people think there's something wrong with this. Because mm -hmm. people always think the worst. Mm -hmm. That's just human nature. 
What's back here? Okay. So there's a half a bathroom back here. Okay. But you could put a shower in there. Man, this space. door frame. Oh. Yeah, it's got it's got more space. What is it? This room's laying in the room just there. She says you use it as a bedroom because it's got a window. Right. I would make that to a full oh, because you got space in there. Yeah. And you have space to make a shower. Exactly, because even on this side. And you have the plumbing already there. Yeah. Actually, you know what? This is